It is Thursday, December 22nd, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. Producer Dan is along for the ride as well. Our final show before the weekend holiday. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Hope everybody's cheery. If you need a little last minute shopping ideas, just check out Trevor Plouffe today on our YouTube side of things as he is modeling a talking baseball uh, sweatshirt and a John Boy Media mug. Anything yeah. else you want to, uh, you know, Brown knows the bosses with today? We got these new trucker hats. I think you call these like Hollywood chic. I see a lot of Hollywood dudes wearing this. So if that interests yeah. you at all, shop.johnboymedia.com. Oh, that's right. We guarantee you it'll get there by Christmas of 2023. There you go. So there you go. <laughs> you know what? A late gift uh, won't ever hurt anybody. So if you want to do a little shopping, that's fine. Because speaking of late shopping, mm. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, they went to Dior. The biggest turnaround they? we have seen in <laughs> quite a while. Uh, Carlos Correa, an about face. We mm. thought he was going to San Francisco for 13 years and three fifty. Instead, we all woke up on Wednesday morning and he was a New York Met for 12 years and 315 million. Uh, apparently, the Giants and Correa's camp didn't exactly see the medical charts the same way. Now, Trev, is this a fun, exciting story or one that has more questions than answers at this point? I think as of right now, the initial rush is that it's fun. And, and you know, Steve Cohen, what he's doing with the Mets and their payroll and that team, it's fun. Um, but there's definitely still some questions out there. You know, we don't know exactly what the Giants saw or what they thought they saw. And I'd, I'd like to know. Uh, I know that the records are probably going to be sealed, but you know how these things go. Like someone's going to leak something. I'm just curious about it. Uh, not to like put a damper on everything, but the Mets still have to do their physical too. So I'm curious how that's going to go. So there's all <laughs> sorts of stuff that's happening. Um, we've seen this kind of go down um, a couple different times throughout free agency in baseball where one team will say, oh, we see something. And another team says, I'm not so sure. We saw it with Kumar Rocker in the draft. Um, he goes goes back, ends up playing independent ball. The Rangers draft the next year. They don't see any problem with it. So I believe Carlos Correa will be healthy. I don't think there's anything too, you know, he's not going to just stop playing baseball anytime soon. But I'm curious. I, I've talked to some Giants fans, Chris, and here's a little conspiracy theory for you. Because a lot of people who are Giants fans are saying this. Was there some sort of buyer's remorse? Was this just to get off the hook? Absolutely. That's what you're thinking, huh? I am i don't know. I'm not so sure. I want more information on this. But if that's the case, then it's not a good time to be a Giants fan if that's what's happening. And we'll get to that side of things a, a little bit later in the show. Um, yeah, there's way too many questions here. First and foremost, how does how does Correa sign that quickly when he gets dumped by the Giants? Now, Ken Rosenthal did a great kind of expose yeah. on what we believe transpired in the athletics. So go read that. But just to summarize very quickly, I mean, Correa was dressed and ready to go for his press conference on Tuesday yeah. when they canceled it. So we all kind of went, OK, this could be a little strange. Maybe there's just a few details they have to iron out contractually. But then you started hearing rumors that maybe there was something, you know, a little weird about his physical. So at that point, Boris picks up the phone and calls Stevie Cohn, who's vacationing in Hawaii, and is like, here's your final piece. Like, it just seems, doesn't it seem no, that's strange not what he to said. you that he said, it worked out this fluidly? He said, Correa miss came early. That's what he said. Another pun for old Scotty B. You know, I don't know. Look, the, the, there are many teams talking to Scott and, and Carlos during the off season. And even in the 11th hour, it was, you know, the Mets came in and, and Steve Cohen went to reporters and said, we were just too late. We didn't get there in time. Uh, well, now the giants, you know, I think they just wanted some more time. This is what we're reading. And you, you're, you right to reference the Ken Rosenthal article. Uh, the giants just wanted a little bit more time. Scotty B said, here's your time frame." When that came and went, he started talking to other teams and I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Typically that's not okay. When you, when you come to an agreement, that's it. And, and, and you, finish the deal you take your physical and you sign on the dotted line but if the team's holding up and there's something you know on your physical that you don't agree with and they're saying this and you're saying that then i'm it's fair game to go and talk to other people time is of the essence with contracts like this well the one thing we really haven't discussed is what it means on the baseball field assuming that he clears okay medically 
Now you've got Correa at third. You've got Lindor at short. You've got McNeil at second. You've got Alonzo at first. That is just an animal infield right there. They just traded James McCann. So that freed up a little, little bit of dough, I think. But I mean, their entire team, you look at it and it's just like, boy, if they don't, if they don't win the World Series at the end of this year, God knows what they're going to do. Are they going to pay Shohei <laughs> 500 next year? That would be awesome. Uh, I don't know. That, that was one question mark that we had on, on Talking Baseball was, you know, uh, maybe they're looking to clear space for Gabriel Moreno because if you, who's a catching prospect for them, because if you look mm-hmm. at that lineup, one through eight, your eight hitters, Mark Canna, and then you have your catcher. They brought in Omar Nevarez. But if you can get a guy like Gabriel Moreno, who's shown like, crazy pop in the minor leagues you get him in that lineup then we're talking about a one through nine lineup with that starting rotation you know with that bullpen i mean we're talking about a team that has put themselves like close to the top of the nl as far as rosters go and that happened very very quickly the only thing is with a kid like moreno do you want to turn him into the uh the driver of the car for pitching staff that includes two future hall of famers on it right away not right away not right away. I mean, that's why they bring in Omar Nevarez, you know, to settle it in. But I, I could see by the end of the year, if if he makes enough progress in that part of the game, that we'd be seeing that type of lineup. You don't, I mean, he okay. has to play eventually in the big leagues. Yeah, he does. He does. No question. Uh, so this moves on to our second question pertaining to the Mets. Has Stevie Cohen's relentless pursuit of a championship, kind of his willingness to spend whatever it takes to go get that uh, commissioner's trophy, taken some out of the fun out of free agency or it, for most baseball fans, in your opinion? I, I mean, I don't think it's taken the fun out of, of it for most base, baseball fans. I think it's led them to start questioning some of their ownership. And I think that's kind of the bigger story here is, what are the other owners thinking right now? And there's a lot of literature out there talking about that, that he's shaking it up and this is a, a, you know, a good old boys club and they stick together and they're going to be coming at Stevie, but what are they going to do? What can they do except be jealous or try to match him? I don't know, man. Like I think, and I said this yesterday too, on our show, that this is going to cause a a shakeup and who owns these teams because I've hung around some rich people. And now I haven't hung around a ton of billionaires, but I know the general essence of what goes on. You can have everything. When you have that type of money, you can have everything and you can buy everything. But there's something rare about a baseball team. And then not only that, having that like jewel, uh, one of 30 things that you can have, uh, it's the social aspect of it. Steve Cohen's walking around New York. He is literally like the king of New York right now. And prior mm-hmm. to him owning the Mets, yeah, did people know him? Sure. It was kind of like in a negative light, I'd, I'd imagine. But now he's the king. And it's because he's, he's going out there and spending money. And don't tell me there's other billionaires aren't out there looking at him being like, oh, I want to do that. That seems fun. I want to own the Miami Marlins and I want to be king of Miami. All I got to do is buy it and spend some money. People will be talking about me. That's the stuff that these guys care about. It's the truth, dude. They want notoriety. And sometimes you can't just buy that, except if you buy a major league franchise and make a splash like Steve Cohen has. I think it's going to change. I think it's going to change everything. Well, we'll see. What is the one thing that the owners have been reluctant to do whenever it's been in negotiations or anything else? It is show their hand, right? Show their financial hand. A lot of these guys have cried poor and say, well, we can't compete with the Mets. But then we read about the net worth of some of these smaller market owners. And you're like, well, wait a second. It just doesn't compute. So if you just do a little digging as a fan, you know, uh, the, the problem is, is we don't, we as baseball fans don't get to talk to the owners. Right. They don't have press conferences. Uh, you don't get to add, occasionally they'll hold some sort of, you know, town hall summit once every few years. Yeah. But the, you think they're going to want to answer questions about their finances? Of course, they're not going to want to. So I think it'll just kind of go along. And, you know, teams like Pittsburgh and Cleveland and Oakland will sit there and twiddle their thumbs and have a payroll significantly lower than the New York Mets. And, it's an unfair playing field and we just know that and you just go root for your team if you want to and you get frustrated and roll your eyes and throw your hands in the air if you don't. I just I just don't think it's an unfair playing field. I think everyone can do the exact same thing. It's perceived that way. There's no cap. There's taxes. And I think that's mm-hmm. another thing that we probably are going to have to discuss at a later date is 
what the hell are they going to try to put in the next CBA? Because they tried to stop Steve Cohen in this last one, and then stop Steve Cohen. They're no. going to put the Chris Rose tax in there. That's the highest tier for those really rich people. What is that? Eat eat as much as you want. <laughs> if you go over that, then what? You get penalized with a cardiology appointment. <laughs> what happens? I don't know, man. I think this is. I I really do think that this is a massive shakeup in the ownership side of baseball. And yeah, I mean, I don't know, like the guys that are owning these teams right now, Chris, they don't want to let them go either. But nope. when you have this maverick type of dude coming in, just, I mean, cr- I mean, his tax penalty alone is more than what? 13 teams, entire payroll. That yeah, is, I a think it's, it's joke. It, it's between 10 and 13, depending Whatever. on what source you're looking at and things of that nature. But it is insane. It's double digits, and that's utterly preposterous. I mean, we're talking about a a, a payroll and a tax that's going to be half a billion dollars this year. I mean, I seen unbelievable a, yes. numbers. I've seen a lot of people being like, well, you know, they're still going to lose in the wild card, or they're going to do this. and They and, might. And so-and-so spends this much money, and they still make the play. It's like, so what? You know, like, let the guy – own the team the way he wants to own the team. And and obviously, baseball players are thrilled with what's going on. Of course. Well, you know, here's the thing. They're giving themselves the best chance to win. If you have a better sure. team, I'll take that chance. Then, you know, last year we saw Philadelphia sweep two games in St. Louis. We saw San Diego come in and win a bit best of three at City Field. Yeah, it, it's going to happen, particularly in the sport, particularly in the sport with such a short series yeah best roster in the nl right now oh i think it's them okay you got the braves but i don't think it's by a significant margin the dodgers i i agree i think there's a tier and and they made the top tier oh yeah i mean between philly atlanta the mets i don't put san philly diego on that and la you know that's the top five here's and my it's top not tier my top tier, I don't put Philly on there. I put Braves, I put Dodgers, I put Mets, I put Padres. Yeah, but you can't, once Bryce Harper gets back for the second half of the year, you can't put it past Philly. They God, just got to game six of the World Series and added Trey Turner. And Tyler You're right, Walker, they're close, they're close, Chris. I don't mean to offend my Philly fans, but. You're not going to offend anybody. Who cares? Who gives they don't, a care, what what I, you they don't care what I say. <laughs> Uh, today's edition of baseball today is presented to you by our friends over at true classic tees it is the best fitting t-shirt around take it from a guy who constantly wears t-shirts and constantly is looking for ones that taper at the bottom that are broad up top Mm. and can make you look good and sexy Mm. so here's the deal i want you to head on over to trueclassic.com slash today you're going to get 25 percent off your true classic tees which have the variety of the entire rainbow in terms of a wardrobe look. So depending on your mood, you could go with the black tee, which is one of the ones I've got. I've also got like the grayish blue one. I've got one that's more blue. I've got one that's green. And I'm one of those guys that always color codes all my t-shirts. They're hanging in my closet. So they're easy to find. They're easy to wear and they make you look good. In fact, True Classic has already helped more than 2 million men look great in their tees, okay? So go out and get it today. You'll feel good. If you're a tall dude, they've got those. If you're a bigger dude, they got it all the way up to triple XL. It is the number one gift for men out there on Santa's wish list. And if you can't get it by December 25th, that's okay. Because the other 364 days of the year, True Classic tees will look great on you as well. Once again, get 25% off a of True Classic tees at trueclassic.com slash today. They include free shipping on any purchase over $100. I want you looking good. I want you feeling good. Head on over to trueclassic.com today. All right, we continue on, and we thought maybe the Giants would be getting um, Aaron Judge a nice True Classic tee earlier this offseason. That didn't work out. Now, Carlos Correa has said thanks, but no thanks after everybody looked at the medicals. Uh, how much will San Francisco regret not landing one of the mega stars of the sport this offseason? I'm not so sure, Chris. Uh, again, I, I've been talking to Giants fans, and I don't know if this is just like uh, them trying to cope with losing out on 
you know, allegedly having these two guys, but a lot of them are saying, you know what? We didn't want to spend that much money on one player. Anyway, we got so many holes that we got to fill and we could spread that money around and do that and do this. And you know what? Part of me says that might be true because if you did just add Carlos Correa to your team, along with some of the other supplemental pieces, I don't know if that's enough to, to take them to a championship. Uh, so we'll see, man. I, we, we have to know the direction of this franchise right now. Where are you going to go? Are you going to go out all out next year and try to get Shohei? If that's the case, okay, let's see it. Uh, you got to outbid, you know, several other teams who are going to be coming hard at him. So I don't know where this leaves the Giants. As currently constructed, that roster is just not, it's not where the Dodgers are, where the Padres are, or the other teams in the NL uh, that we just mentioned are. So they they definitely have some work to do. Whether they're going to rely on the player development side to you know bring some guys up, I don't know. I don't know if they have that kind of farm system. Are they going to swing some trades? I don't know. I don't know if they have that kind of farm system. So right now, you know, I think we have to just wait and see. It's not going to be in the good. middle, Ploof. It's not going to be good right now. They are caught in the middle. They are. They're caught in the middle. It's a terrible spot to be in in sports. Probably one of the most exciting, but also one of the worst things that could have happened to them was them winning 107 games in 2021 because they felt like, okay, you know, we've kind of squeezed that forces the, the hand last, right there. Yeah, we kind of squeezed mm-hmm. out the last bit of this veteran group that had been around and won rings and all that sort of stuff. Maybe if we just add a supplement the roster, that'll be good enough. Um, so I kind of threw it out there in the middle yesterday. I said, listen, Giants fans, I understand you're hurting. Maybe they'll end up looking like the smartest kid in the room. Just tell me how you're feeling. And I think it was nearly a 50-50 split on people who wanted to get rid of ownership, get wanted to get rid of Farhan. <laughs> they wanted to get rid of their season tickets. And then the other side who was like, what's the big deal? We would be, have been pay, overpaying for an average shortstop who's going to break down in two years. So I I found it fascinating to see how people were dealing with this. I think as an outsider's perspective, they look like a team that either A, doesn't want to truly close the deal, or B, can't. Is that the way you look at them? I just think, look, we're going to talk about this later. Like Guys, big free agents like that want to know what the plan is. And I don't know if they have a plan. And that's not, you know, money, the money is great, but the money is going to be with other teams too. And when you get to this point and you can make a decision uh, of where you're going to play, you want a clear path to the postseason every year, or at least a, a shot at it. And I don't know if they've been able to sell that. Yeah. That's the bottom line. I, I don't think so at all. And in fact, when Shohei is available next off season, part of the gripe that we've been hearing is that he's sick of losing. So why would he want to go to a place where he's not guaranteed to be in on the October action? That's why, be tough. To, to me, that's why this is a big whiff. We talked about, well, Carlos Correa, sure, is he going to make them an 85-87 win team this coming year? Still, they'll be the third place in the NL. Like, that's what we saw. But we said that that's something you can sell. Hey, look, we just gave Carlos Correa 350 mil. We've brought in Mitch Hanniger. We've brought in Ross Stripling. These are these are pieces that are going to add. You're the guy who now gets us in contention with the Dodgers and Padres in the West and those other monsters in the East. Like, you are the final piece. Now what do they have to sell? I, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, and, and again, I've talked to, to many Giants fans here, and that's kind of the what I got back was, hey, we're more than one guy away, even with, even with the signings this like, offseason. So, but this is, it had to be a building block. It, even if this year was just a 500 team, at least to say, we've got the star here. We've got the star. And that means other stars will want to come here and look at what our ownership has done in the past. We're willing to spend money right now. It just looks, they look confused there. I mean, obviously they're willing to spend money. I mean, but you have to, it takes two to tangle. You have to get guys to come there. And I'm curious, look, and I don't mean this is not shots fired at San Francisco. I love going up there. And I think that there are many parts of San Francisco that are beautiful. But like if you're going to plant roots for 12 years, I don't know, man. Like I don't know if San Francisco is the place that I'm going to go. Is that bad to say? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's a part of the equation that you have to think about. I mean, the taxes are enormous in um, the state of California. And people say, well, then why would you go to San Diego or L.A.? 
Well, those are very different cities than San Francisco. Very it's, San Francisco is a city I particularly love. I, I really enjoy the place, but it's not for everybody. Mm-mm. It's not for and everybody. New, and New York's not for everybody. for yeah. LA. Yeah, I agree. So it's just kind of what fits your personality. I mean, honestly, when I thought about Carlos Correa in San Francisco, it doesn't really mash up. Besides the fact that he was going to be like the villain in that rivalry, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. But think me thinking about him like walking around with like, a, I don't know. It, did, it didn't seem right. Uh, but for somebody else, it could be perfect. I think the Giants have to do a little soul searching in the near future and think about how they do business. We'll see. So they missed out on Aaron Judge. Speaking of, he played a little meet the press on Mm -hmm. Wednesday up in New York City, still donning the pinstripes, still donning the classic hat. And now he will don the C. He will be the 16th captain in New York Yankees history. This is an incredible honor that, you know, I don't take lightly and, um, you know, I'm going to continue to try to be, you know, the same leader that I've been, you know, the past six years, uh, continue to lead by example. And you know, I know there's probably going to be a couple more responsibilities with this, but, you know, I'm here to embrace every single obstacle and, you know, continue to lead this team and lead this city to, to not one, but, you know, multiple championships down the road. So, uh, multiple championships down the road. He hasn't even gotten to one fall classic just yet. Not necessarily his fault, but it just hasn't happened. In fact, it hasn't happened for that franchise since they won it all in 2009. Ploofy, does he have to win a title to be considered a Yankee great? We've sort of talked about this before. I don't think he necessarily has to. Uh, We can mention Don Mattingly and talk about that, who also was a Yankee captain. I didn't even know that. I started looking at who was a Yankee captain. I, I guess I... And grew up a Yankee fan. Um, but so you can give that example. Don Manley never won a championship, but he's very beloved uh, by Yankee fans. Uh, I think that Aaron Judge, it sure make him a bigger Yankee legend if he went and won a championship or, like he said, multiple championships. I mean, that's kind of the mark. If you want to be like a Jeter or a Babe Ruth, who, I mean, like, are those the top two, like, Yankees? Babe Ruth, Jeter, Mantle, DiMaggio? I mean, the, like, yeah. those guys, if you want to be on that level, yeah. I think you have to win a championship. I really do. Um, this guy says all the right things all the time. No wonder our super producer, Dan Work, loves him. He walks the walk. He talks the talk. Now, so I guess to answer your question, Chris, I think he does have to win champ- uh, ch- one championship mm-hmm. at least to be at that elite elite yankee level which is awesome i mean he's already going to be a prominent figure in yankee history he's won an mvp he's got this big contract he's a captain now but that upper echelon the top gun of yankee greats if you will i think you have to win a championship um do you know how many postseason at bats don mattingly had in his career Ooh. I don't, I don't, Chris. I have no guess. Hundred. Would it surprise you if I said the same number as you? Oh my God. Yes, it would. I know the so Yankees he, were bad for a, a, a spell there, but he never made the playoffs. You know, he never what? made the play. He joined them in 1982, the year after they lost to the Dodgers in the 1981 World Series. And he left after 95, which was the year before they started their run of winning four titles in five years. He missed out on everything. So I think part of the reason they let Don Mattingly slide is he was far and away the best Yankee player for a decade, and they didn't do enough to support him. They brought in Dave Winfield, who they named Mr. May up there. Well, George Steinbrenner called him Mr. May. And they just didn't add enough pitching. You know, they brought in Ricky Henderson for a time. They thought that was going to be enough. It wasn't. But they could never get the pitching right up there during the 80s for the most part. And so Don Mattingly never got his shot. And I think that people don't hold that against Don Mattingly. I I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I mentioned that Yankee fans don't hold it against Don Mattingly because the franchise was left and right and could never go center. And uh, they were zigzagging all over the place. In the meantime, Aaron Judge has appeared in the playoffs every year. Wait, he just for the record. Oh, Mattingly did play in the 1995 series. Ah, my bad. He did play against Seattle. I thought he was was, out. I thought we had a bond, Don and I, but now... I I'm forgot out. that he played in that series. God dang it. Uh, this is what happens when you get old. Point <laughs> is still the same. Well, not really. Not really. <laughs> now I'm going to take that point away. 
So he had one shot at it in 95. They blew a 2 nothing lead against Seattle. He's still very – I mean, we can ask Dan. You can type because we don't want to hear your voice, Dan. He's still a beloved Yankee. But Judge doesn't want to be that. He doesn't want to be a beloved Yankee. He wants to be an absolute Yankee legend. Yes. Like number retired. They don't do statues. They do monuments. That's what he wants. Yep. Yep. My God, I'm going to have to check my eyes on my baseball reference reading page. That's pretty bad, Chris. I don't know what happened to me. You got me excited, too. I know. I totally, I totally whiffed that he, uh, that he missed out on uh, that he played in 95. I even watched that whole series of working in Reno, Nevada. See what happens when you get old? I love right, congratulations I love Reno to Dan stories. Swanson, who's going to grow old on the north side of Chicago. Inks that seven-year, $177 million deal. This is uh, Cubs. I believe Jed Hoyers is the president up there now. And he said that uh, Dansby was the one who was grilling them during the interview process. You know, when we, we met with, um, with Dansby and Mallory in, in Atlanta, um, the thing that really st- stood out to me was that it felt like he was interviewing us. How are, how are you guys going to win? Um, what's your plan? What's your philosophy? You know, what players are you going to surround me with? Who are the prospects that are coming? Uh, it was very clear winning was the priority. How, how are you going to build a team around me? How confident are you that they're going to stick to their word and build a good team around Dansby Swanson? I mean, I hope they do. I just want to, I mean, every player asks those questions. I don't think that's some like, uh, like out of the box type thing. I mean, come on, mm-hmm. man. Like I, I want to give Dansby credit, but like, you don't think every single one of these big free agents is like, what are you guys going to do? Unless you're going to, you know, a team that's already established, but like, come on, man. I'm happy for Dansby though. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. I think that for a while, we thought the Cubs were caught in the middle. And, you know, do you go full rebuild? Do you retool? Now they bring in Dansby. I don't think he's enough to put him over the hump, but in a nice piece to build around. And you can go and, you know, you just got to continue to draft well, develop well, make some trades. They've been adding pieces little by little. Um, but they they got more they got more to do. And I know he's going to be there for quite some time, so maybe it's just going to take a few years. But I don't think, you know, 2023 is going to be their year. Um, but eventually, I mean, look, they definitely have money there, okay? And they can spend. If Steve Cohen can spend what he spent, they can go out into free agency and supplement that roster as well. I hope they do because it's a lot better. I think baseball is better when the NL Central is pumping out, you know, at least the Cardinals, the Cubs, the Brewers. We want a... We don't want to talk about any division and be like, that's the weak division. And the Cubs need to get going if they want the NL Central to be that. It's been a powerhouse division before, and I want it to be a powerhouse division again. I'll give the Cubs credit. I thought there was no way they were going to sign one of the big four short stops. They I said didn't think the that they time, were going to though. sign one of them. What's that? They said it the whole time that they were going to do it. I did. know, but I didn't believe them. Okay. I didn't believe them. I thought for sure that was just lip service. And so I'm going to give them credit that they – put their money where their mouth went. And so yeah. for me, I'll raise my hand and say I was wrong. Just like I was terribly wrong on the Don Mattingly stuff. That's going to bother me, man. It is going to bother you. Jesus Christ. I should have known that. I, I, I thought for some reason he was hurt already. My God. I feel like you've been telling people that for a long time and this, your bubble just got bursted. Is that what happened? No, I don't. I don't think okay. I've discussed it very much to be honest okay. with you. I mean, I should have known that I watched the whole damn series. God dang it. Shit, I don't even have an answer for the Cubs now. I'm so frustrated with the Mattingly stuff. I, there's nothing to answer. We got to see what they what they do. I mean, again, well, like I I love Dansby. By the way, he looked, he looked great in the post and or in the press conference. So you got that going for you. Always Chicago. looks great. I know. I mean, he could have been wearing a shit suit and he would have looked nice. Is that? I mean, I'm kind of sick of him. He's so good looking. It kind of makes me mad. How about that? Really? Yeah. Really. You're saying that to me. You're the first thing other than Michelle I have to look up at every day. I mean, dude, that I'm makes not, me feel I'm good not, about myself. I'm not classically handsome. Like Dansby Swanson is classically handsome. What, what I'm all I, personality, bro. That's not true. You do have a solid, it's at least a C solid. plus personality. Yeah. Solid and personality. you're lying. Decent. You're lying. You and Olivia look like you belong on the top of a wedding cake. Oh my God. Olivia, not me. I'm just just you know what it's baseball today let's talk some baseball that's it that's all we have time for 
That's all we have time for. We're going to wrap things up. Are you ready for the holidays? Speaking of wrapping. Got everything done. Every single Good. person taken care of. Good boy. Good boy. Well, a happy, healthy holiday season to everybody, no matter what you celebrate, if it's the fifth night of Hanukkah for you tonight, or whether you're getting ready for Christmas over the weekend with your family or Kwanzaa coming up, I believe on Monday, uh, we want you to just celebrate, be around family and friends. And for for those of you where it's a little lonely, you got to remember this. This is a, can be a tough time of year. So check in on your friends who maybe aren't able to go home aren't able to spend the holiday with their friends and family, just give them a call. Don't just shoot them a text. Give them a call, check in on them, see how they're doing. We're all family at the end of the day, and we want you to take care of one another. It's really important. Yeah, if you want to talk to somebody, reach out to me and Chris on social media. How about that? We're here. Or come We're in the app app. You can literally talk to us. We're chatty. That's what happens. We're back at it again next week. We think it'll probably be Tuesday, but we're not 100% sure. Most likely that's what it'll be. But let's keep the action going in baseball. It has mm. been fun. So for our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan Rourke, and the personality-driven Trevor Plouffe, I am Chris Rose, off to study my Don Mattingly statistics. Thanks for tuning in to Baseball Today.